Yo, it's Death of the Cloud Chaser TV, man. We back up in this thing again. You did like what was the issue? Like the main issue why it caused the separation? Like was it the money? Was it the you know? No, I said it. You, I said wasn't, it on, you know, I said it on on a few a few times. Like you know, it was because I didn't get paid for that specific interview, and um, and some people again like with me and Queens Flip was going back and forth. Some people say, yo, that's petty. Like you should have stayed on board. But like again, people wasn't behind the scenes with me. They didn't know all of the shit that I was doing. Whether it came as personal safety, um, managing the shop, making sure guests got on board, whatever. I was willing to do it. I was willing to do it. And even though I was getting paid pennies to the dollar, I, I still stayed on board because I knew how big the platform was. And I knew how much help he actually needed. So um, it, was, it was because, like, you fix your mouth to tell me out of all people, after all the, all the work that I put in, especially that day that you're not going to pay me. Like I'm a man at the end of the day. That shit pissed me the fuck off, bro. That shit had me pissed. Cause I'm like, yo, you're not fixing your mouth to say this to nobody else. So it's like, you basically saying like, yo, I could, I could, if I'm trying to save some money and um, I had to pick people out of this room, then champ is going to go first. But I believe he was under the assumption that I was going to jack it because he must have felt like I didn't have anything else going on. That's why. So I originally, you did see it as an opportunity to like you know further your brand, come on board. You you able to further your brand. So it was a little bit different from like some of the other guys, like um SO or or bigger in your situation. Like you understood like the purpose you was going on there to to further your brand. Yeah. Um. Absolutely. I mean, the thing is, I was invited there. Right, that I, I don't know if people really understand this, but I, I didn't ask to come on Map Show. I never asked him. I never said, "Yo, I want to be a part of this platform. This shit is so dope." No, we were connected by a mutual person we know. And when me and him finally met in person, he was like, "Yo, you should come by the shop." I was like, "All right, cool." Not knowing all the little fucking nuances that was going on in the shop when I first walked in there. The tension with Heineken and SO and, and math and space goes over here and bigger feeling the way he feel. I didn't know none of that shit was going on, but I could see visual visually that something is off in that motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? But I sat there, I said, all right, cool. Let me see what the vibes is. Let me see how me and Boyd connect or whatever. And then he invited me back again. And then he invited me back again. It's not like I ran down on him and said, yo, man, please put me on your show. Because you got to understand the dynamics of what was happening at the time. Math we're about to lose two more people. Two more people leave. After they leave, now it's like, damn, Math, you lost Misfit, you lost Knowledge. Um, now you losing, you lost Heineken and Esso. But now here comes Champ, not knowing all of this bullshit is going on behind the scenes, and it's like, oh, son, son just got out of the, out of the joint. He got the magazine shit popping. This nigga, he's outside. Everybody knows who he is behind the scenes, not, not publicly like that. I need to get him in here so people could see, like, nah, look, there's always people ready to be on deck to sit in the chair. You understand what I'm saying? Like, that's how I look at it in retrospect. It's like, I, I, I it was like a, a, a chess move, essentially. And yes, another thing is this. I always stated my gratitude for being on that man platform if you ever watch episodes that i was on when he go around the room and he asked me yo champ was good what's the vibes yo happy to be home happy to be free happy not to be around fuck niggas yo man again thank you brother for putting me on the platform appreciate you man all the time if he ever helped me with something i vocally and publicly stated that shit you understand what i'm saying and if you look at the if you look at the episodes there's mad times that there was shit that like really happened, like outside of the shop type shit. Nigga never been told, yo, good looking, bro. Good looking for holding that down. Good looking. Ain't never been none of that. You did say in the interview as well that you overextended yourself and did a lot of stuff that you weren't compensated for outside of, you know, interviews you were paid for. So you did say you did a lot of free work and it was taking up a large portion of your day. And so you, well, that, from what I Well, that's why. I'm, Angie, not to cut you off, but that's why if, in an interview I said we had a conversation, right? I remember I said the first few episodes when he was like, yo, I want you to sit in the chair finally. Because look, I sat on the sideline for Tony Ayo and Uncle Murder. That's the first time I went in the shop. I sat on the sideline for Joel Ortiz and Crooked Eye. 
I sat on the sideline for um Derrick Rose, right? A few interviews. I say about six, seven interviews. And then he finally yeah. said, yo, I want you to come sit because I guess he was watching me and, and stuff like that. So initially, I, like I said, I was volunteering. I was there. He kept asking me to come back. I see shit is off. So me being the person I am, I jump up. Yo, this shit need to be swept. This shit look crazy. Yo, this shit need to be no, da, da, da. I wasn't asked to do that. I voluntarily did that because he invited me into his place of business. So I guess him watching that, it evolved. And it's something that I kind of set the standard with, like, yo, boy, going to do what he need to do one way or another. Yeah. But then it got to a point where I was like, yo, when I bought Al Bial the first time, that's the first guest I ever bought to the show. And that's when he asked me to sit in the chair because I bought him to the show. It turned into like, yo, um, yo, bro, you know, I've been around, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's been a few weeks now. You know what I mean? What we doing? You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, champ, what you think about this number for now? You know what I'm saying? Appreciate you being here and stuff like that. All right, cool. Yeah, I'll, I'll work with that for now, but we're going to revisit this conversation. Yeah, no doubt. Definitely. That's how that went. 